The Smith & Wesson M&P 5.7, let's check it out. Guys, I love 5.7, super easy to shoot. I mean, it's just low recoil, and yet it can be an effective self-defense round. Uh, there have been a number of different handguns and rifles that have been produced in 5.7. It is a NATO caliber, it was introduced in 1990 by FN for the P90, uh, and then the FN 5.7, which is their pistol. Uh, Ruger came out with one, PSA now has come out with one, and now Smith & Wesson. I love it because that means that the 5.7 caliber, which is a neck down 35 grain in this case, going 1,750 feet per second, and it's bringing the price down. It's been the one bane for 5.7 is the price has been pretty high, but we're getting it down to a fairly reasonable price. And the more firearms that come out in 5.7, the more that's gonna happen. Uh, but one thing about the Smith & Wesson, it's not just another 5.7. It has the tempo delayed rotary gas system in this gun and it tames the recoil even more and it's very innovative. Guys, I'm telling you, we're living in the golden age of firearms and here is another example of that golden age. And we want to thank Smith & Wesson for sending the M&P 5.7 for this review. Now guys, I think one of the things that I really love about 5.7 is the mag capacity. I mean, we have 22 plus one in the mag, and that gives you a lot of capability. Uh, we're gonna look at it a little closer, but the 5.7 is a definitely a great self-defense round. It comes in between the nine millimeter and 380 as far as ballistics, and yet the recoil is considerably less. It is a neck down cartridge, uh, and that just allows for the pressures, allows for feeding to be really uh, reliable, and it just is more like a rifle round. In fact, this was designed for the P90, which is a rifle, made for close quarter combat. And so it doesn't penetrate quite as far as a lot of your standard self-defense ammunition as well. And there's a number of different ammo choices. But before we get started, let's go ahead and drop our 22 round magazine. I mean, that is just crazy in itself. They are stainless, check, and the chamber is empty. Now over the past couple of years, we've had some additions to the 5.7 family. Originally we had the FN 5.7. Uh, this is a very unique design firearm. I mean, it is different than anything else on the market. And it was the first pistol that was designed for 5.7. Uh, one of the things about that pistol in particular is it's fairly expensive. Uh, in fact, almost double what these three that I have on the table. Uh, then Ruger came out with their 5.7. Uh, this is a 20 plus one in the magazine. It's a great shooting gun. Uh, it, do, it is internal hammer fired, which is very similar to the Smith & Wesson, which is also internal hammer fired. And then we have the PSA 5.7 Rock. And this is a 23 round magazine. So you're getting an additional round, uh, and, but the price is considerably less. And PSA is really putting out some pretty cool stuff. So when Smith & Wesson came out with their 5.7, I wasn't shocked, but honestly, I was a little surprised. But with the popularity of 5.7 that's really began to generate, this gives us some different unique features than even the other two. And I've done full reviews on these two, uh, but this is something that's a little bit different. So guys, now this is what's so innovative about the Smith & Wesson 5.7. Uh, this is the Tempo rotating barrel system. And what happens right here is this is your barrel and it actually turns and rotates right here. This outer part is a sleeve 
And so you'll notice, and we'll go ahead and pull the barrel on out. You have gas checks all the way down. Uh, we have a hole right here or a gas port. And once the round expends past this gas port, it actually unlocks the barrel in this sleeve. And so that gives it some delay, which makes it really soft shooting. And it makes it more reliable. And so you'll notice that it just comes out like this. It doesn't come all the way out. It just rotates and then it locks back in. Here when it's on the frame, you'll notice it just has that much movement. It's not a lot, but it gives it that delay that brings it back. And that's really the, the big plus for the MMP 5.7. Definitely very innovative. Uh, the rotating barrel designs have been you know, reported already as being you know, a very big recoil reducer. Beretta has their Storm, PX4 Storm. It's a rotating barrel. Grand Power does a number of rotating barrel systems. And I think even Glock, uh, rumors are that they have been working on a rotating bolt system as well. And so it just gives it a very safe uh, system that it delays it to unlock. We are going to show the complete disassembly, but I wanted to show this very unique feature right up front. Now again, we have a five inch barrel, half by 28 threads. The slide has that armor knight finish, which to me is one of the best black nitride finishes on the market. Smith & Wesson does a fantastic job, I mean, on their finishing. Uh, we have front and rear cocking serrations, but you do have this kind of a beveled area up at the top. So it makes it really simple to be able to pull back. And we're going away now from the kind of a fish scale pattern that Smith & Wesson was using for their MMP series and going more toward really directional slide serrations. But you can see all the different cuts. Uh, we have cuts here, ports. The barrel's not ported, but the slide's ported. And this just relieves weight. Uh, and then we have serrations along the top, and that just cuts down on any kind of glare uh, when you're shooting. Now this is optics ready, uh, and this is for the Shield RMSC or the micro red dots. And that'll fit a lot of your holosons or different really small micro red dots. Uh, because this pistol is so thin, so you don't want a standard red dot, but it is flush to the slide. We have three dot sights, and you, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of different options, and of course the front sight is beveled in. Texturing on the grip is excellent, and it does give you a really nice high ride on here, and it's undercut right here at the trigger guard. So. Fairly low bore axis, but really with the recoil that this puts out, it's not a super big deal as it is with more heavier recoiling firearms. Uh, you do have a four slot Picatinny rail at the front, and it is fully ambidextrous. Your slide stops, again, are on both sides. And you can switch the magazine release to the other side. And one thing about Smith & Wesson with their uh, owner's manual, everything is detailed, even to lubrication points on the firearm. The magazines, I mean, they're just great. I mean, stainless steel, they have the orange follower, nice base plate. And it has that really nice 17 degree grip angle, which is gonna be similar for your 1911s. In fact, this kind of reminds me of a 1911 because it's so thin. But man, the recoil is so nil. <laughs> now we do have our trigger shoe right here, so that's gonna be your safety. Uh, you can get a model with the frame safety, but I requested no frame safety. Uh, this is a flat face trigger. I'm going to tell you what, guys, a little bit of take up right here. Man, that brake is tactile, it's audible, and it is crisp, very crisp. Then reset really fast. And you'll notice that little trigger stop on the end. So there is no over travel. It is, <laughs> this trigger is really excellent. Check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge and brown L's. We're going to try to get it right at that spot where your finger goes. This trigger is a little bit slick on there. Here we go. Three pounds, 8.6 ounces. Three pounds, 13.3 ounces. All right, Smith & Wesson MMP 5.7. It's 26 ounces, or one pound, 10 ounces. Now guys, when it comes to ammo, it's really great to see Fiocchi coming out with a couple of different lines of ammunition for the 5.7. It's a 40 grain bullet, and then they have the 35 grains. One thing I do wanna show you is this really unusual loader. 
Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't load from the top here, even though this loads from the top. And that's one of the things I want to just demonstrate. Just like your AR-15, it just pops in like this. So it's really simple to load and the bullet just goes easily down into the magazine. Uh, with this loader, and you'll see that it's marked at the direction, so as we put it in and we drop around right here into this hole, it just snaps it. <laughs> it took me a few minutes to figure this out, but not too long. And it goes in really consistently. So cool little loading system from Smith & Wesson. And this is a first. And honestly, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. Well, man, I'll tell you what, there is no recoil whatsoever. Uh, there's just no recoil. Uh, we shot it next to the uh, Ruger 5.7 and then the PSA 5.7 Brock. And this definitely, hands down, has the lowest recoil. Obviously that Tempo uh, gas system in here just really spins that gas, but yet it gives it the velocity. Um, I'll tell you guys, I mean, definitely it feels a lot like the other two. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit thinner. Uh, I like it, it feels more like a 1911. The reciprocating slide coming back with all the cuts, it just makes it really, really soft to shoot. I'd love to get a suppressor on here at some point. Um, just a very reliable handgun. It's one of the things about 5.7 is because of the neck down case, it just feeds automatically you know, into that chamber. And so it allows for really consistent, reliable feeding. But uh, overall, I mean, we have had a really great time with this. Um, you know, I've, I'm a big fan of the Ruger and the PSA, but this definitely is a lesser recoiling firearm. I mean, it's just nothing. It's just like, it stays tracked right on with the sight, makes it really easy. And of course, if you want to do any kind of one-handed shots, even we can. Very low recoil, easy to pull the slide back. Uh, slide's a little more difficult than the Rock or the uh, Ruger, actually, because of that locking system, that rotating bolt. Just kind of gives it a little bit of resistance, but then it just comes back really easy. 22 rounds. <laughs> Great option for 5.7. Great to see Smith jump on this. First thing we're gonna do is drop our magazine, again, check the chamber. Uh, now we have our takedown levers right here, are our slide stops. It's kind of one in the same. And you'll notice on the right side of the slide stop, there is a small little pin. Now on the left side, we're gonna bring back our slide stop to this little crescent. And then take a small punch and just push it right out. And your slide stop will just fall free. Once the slide stop's removed, you can pull off your upper assembly, just hold on to your recoil system. Now we have our recoil spring and guide rod. It is all stainless. We have a half by 28 pitch threaded barrel. So this is great for suppressors uh, or compensators, whatever you want to put on it. We have to remove the protector first, then just pull up on your barrel and it comes out. Uh, once we pull it out, we can pull the barrel right out. This is just a sleeve. 
Uh, here you can see where it was test fired at the factory. We have not shot this gun yet. So this is where it's gonna uh, need to be cleaned, need to be maintained in these little ports. This is definitely something that is extremely unique. It's five inches in length, and this is really gonna aid in your recoil. Now here we have our internal hammer, uh, and we're gonna check trigger pull, but this is a really excellent trigger pull on this handgun. But the hammer's flat, it rests really deep, and you know you can see the configuration, but fairly simple. Then here with the slide, got your firing pin block right here, and uh, very a lot of area is removed from the slide, so it keeps it really lightweight. But guys, this is an extremely innovative design, and it's great to see gun companies coming out with things that are totally different than the original Browning design. There's no tilt on this barrel, it rides straight. Now for reassembly, we're gonna insert our barrel, and then it just locks in. You have to have it locked into place before it will reassemble. We're gonna add it into our slide. Now you will notice that the barrel does cant. It does tilt inside the slide. And so you wanna make sure that this is aligned when you put it over your frame. Go ahead and reinsert our thread protector, recoil spring, and guide rod. Next, we're gonna bring the slide over our frame. And guys, I'll tell you, it's a little tricky at first, but once you get it over it, there we go. Uh, working past the guide rod and uh, making sure that barrel's aligned and it kind of aligns itself. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this little crescent and we're gonna line it up with our hole for our slide stop and it just snaps right back into place. We're back in business. Now here we have nine millimeter Parabellum. Uh, this is of course the most popular self-defense round in the world. Uh, and you know, for good reasons. Uh, then we have your 5.7, but then we have the 380 ACP. As far as muzzle energy goes, the 5.7 is right in the middle of these two rounds. Now there is a lot of debate, there's been a lot of testing. Obviously NATO has chosen the 5.7, so it's definitely a capable self-defense round. I mean, it has better ballistics in some aspects, and yet the 9mm is better in other applications. Uh, and then 380 ACP, which is an effective self-defense round, especially with really good quality self-defense ammunition. So less recoil, very light recoil. And that's one of the big pluses for the 5.7. But it's a small bullet going at a really high velocity. Now, what are the advantages of a 5.7, especially compared to a 9mm? First off, you have a lot less recoil. Uh, it's about 30% less. And so it's gonna be easier to get on target, get shots. Secondly, much higher round capacity. Uh, standard Glock 17 in this size would be about 17 rounds plus one. Here we're going with 22 rounds plus one. Much thinner grip. Thicker grip, but thinner grip. So it's a little more ergonomic as well. It also has a greater range. Uh, the 57, you know, it can get out to 200, 250, 300 yards. Uh, especially in a carbine. When you get to 9mm, you know, you're talking about max range in a carbine would be probably about 175 to 200 yards. You're going to get a little more range with your 5.7. But what are some downsides? Well, it's a very small projectile. Yes, it's moving really fast. Uh, and so the kinetic energy, I mean, again, there's a lot of debate over that, but it still offers a really good self-defense option. Uh, very easy to rack the slide, a little more ergonomic. One problem though is all the 5.7 handguns we're seeing are full size. We haven't really seen any compact sizes and that remains to be seen if they're having any kind of issues, maybe with the barrel length needs to be that long to accommodate the 5.7 to make these reliable. Uh, I don't know, so we're gonna find out more about that as it's coming up. But it is a lightweight option. Again, it's really low on recoil, easy to rack the slide. I mean, it's definitely uh, very shootable. And with that, it gives people more confidence to have that shot placement. So I, I see a big advantage there. One big disadvantage though is ammo price and availability. Nine millimeter is much more available. I mean, you've got all kind of different self-defense type loads, different companies making it. Uh, at this point right now, we have a number of companies. Uh, there's a lot of specialty 5.7 ammo out there, but mainly what we're seeing is FN, uh, which is typically the highest 
running about 2,000 feet per second. So it's, it's good stuff. Uh, but then we have Federal has been producing 5.7 uh, through the American Eagle label. And, you know, it's a little bit lesser velocity, but definitely a little less expensive. About $10 less. In fact, I saw it for around the $32 range for a box. And then now Fiocchi has come in and they're offering a number of different lines of ammunition. And we're seeing it running around the $40 range or so. Guys, a few years ago, I did a review on the FN 5.7. And I believe the ammunition was coming in at about $18 a box. So hopefully we'll see it kind of get back down to at least close to that range. It would be nice to see it around $20 a box. And with all the new offerings, uh, whether it's kel CMMG, of course FN, and now PSA, Ruger, and Smith & Wesson. And Smith & Wesson's a big player in this market. That's a big advantage for 5.7 just in itself. And the manufacturer suggested retail price on the Smith & Wesson is $6.99. So we're going to see market price come down less. Um, I think that's pretty close to where the Ruger is. Your FNs are running around $1,000, $1,050. Uh, but then the Palmetto State Armory, uh, they're coming in at about $4.99. And so we're seeing a market of pistols that are kind of going down in price, ammunition's coming down, and the more popular this caliber becomes, I think the lower the prices, the more availability we're going to see with ammo. So guys, we're seeing a lot of 5.7 pistols and rifles, carbines that are coming out. It's one of those rounds, guys, that can go handgun, self-defense, or even for your rifle or carbine. It's great to see the prices coming down, not only on the handguns, but also on the ammunition. Uh, originally, again, $50 a box is what I had been paying about a year ago. And now it's getting down to about that $35, and it will continue to drop as more ammunition companies jump on board. And it's a great thing to see Fiocchi coming out with two new offerings in 5.7. Spirit of competition, it always brings the price down. But guys, if you're looking to get into the 5.7 game, uh, this Smith & Wesson M&P 5.7, man, this is an incredible firearm. And with that tempo recoiling system, with that delay, I mean, it just makes it even softer shooting than the original 5.7, which was really light. This is a great gun for those who are recoil sensitive or have trouble just pulling the slide back. Uh, this makes it even easier for our most vulnerable, but yet it's just a dadgum great firearm. And with the ammo prices coming down, just makes it a lot more appealing. Yeah, I said dadgum, so did my grandpa. And we want to thank Smith & Wesson for sending the M&P 5.7 for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. It's just a dadgum great caliber. And guys, with the price coming down, it makes it that much sweeter. As I drop my glasses. And then the barrel just slides right out now. Then just pull up on your, especially the rotary delayed gas system. Oh, okay. We have our locking block. Okay, that's it. The bolt actually unlocks. That's not a bolt, that's a barrel, you goof. <laughs> Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. <laughs>